Well, it's time to re-wick the tank. So let's clean it out and get some fresh wicks in there and get all that gunk off those coils. We'll start off by disassembling everything and getting it all rinsed up. Uh, we'll take the AFC off and I like to use a doubled over rag to get a grip on the deck with the airflow slots and then we can just twist it right out. So we'll take that out, turn on some warm water and get all of our pieces and parts rinsed off and ready for a fresh wick. It's important to keep your thumb over the middle of the deck and the top cap so that if the uh, tank section o-ring flies off, you can catch it and it doesn't go down the drain. Pay attention to your fill hole o-rings too because those like to jump off under a running stream of water. These uh, sink strainers are a godsend for catching small parts and o-rings and stuff and keeping them from going down the drain. We'll pull our old wicks out and you'll notice how the wick shrinks and that's the main contributor to dry hits over time. That's why we need to rebuild our tanks and re-wick our coils from time to time. You can see all that caramelized sugar from the, the juice that builds up on the coils and that's why we need to clean them. Let's put our deck back together here and well, we, that way we can get it on our mod and dry fire it and get uh, that gunk to cook off of there. So we'll turn the wattage down a little bit here and uh, dry fire those coils a bit, get some heat in them so that, that gunk will pop off pretty easy. I like to use a small laminar stream of water here, just uh, enough water pressure to get the, the water to hold together in a nice even stream. You don't need much, just enough to cool the coils off so you can scrub them a little bit with an old toothbrush. Now that we're all cleaned up, let's get some fresh wicks in there. I like to use cotton pads and I like to split them down the middle as even as possible. This time, for whatever reason, they didn't want to pull apart in equal halves, so I had to peel a little bit of extra off of the thicker side. Uh, if you get yours to split down the middle, then you can just skip this step. As long as they're even and you've got the same amount of wick in both coils, it doesn't really matter. Tiny drop of juice on your fingers will help get a grip on the cotton. Uh, during the cleaning process, the water will rinse most of the oils off your skin, and you should be doing this with clean hands anyway, and that just helps to get a grip and be able to roll this cotton up nice and evenly. Once you get it to a, a relatively uniform tightness, you can check it against your coils and see how much you need to trim off. So just hold it up to your coils and see about how much needs to come off to get a, a snug fit inside the coil. It's usually around an inch, three quarters of an inch to an inch or so. Uh, you can just lose that and roll it nice and tight on one end and stick it in those coils. I like to twist the wick a bit as I'm pulling it through. That kind of helps to reduce the strain on the coils. So just kind of thread it through there and, and give it a spin as you're pulling and it'll 
sort of screw itself into the coils. Once you've trimmed it to length, you can uh, tuck it down into the juice flow channels. And you don't want to go too deep, but you want to leave just a little tiny sliver of, of room b below the end of the wick. Depending on how thick your juice is, will determine how much of a gap you'll need to leave. So just a tiny bit of room, and that's all it takes to get the juice in there. And you're mainly trying to let air into the tank and get juice into the deck. So as long as that can happen, you're golden. One side done, just gotta make the other side match. So repeat the same process and get the other side done. When it comes to the first wetting of the wicks, I like to go in the direction they would naturally have in use. So I tend to start with the juice flow channels, get those ends nice and wet, and then work my way up uh, from each side, finishing in the middle. Once I've got both ends wet, I like to put a small amount across the coils itself and just pulse the button just enough to get some heat into the coils to thin the juice out so that it makes it easier to soak into the middle of those wicks. Once we've got everything nice and wet, we can reassemble the tank. So just start with your O-ring and go up from there. I like to thread the chimney sleeve down over the wicks to keep from moving them from where I have them set. It's also important to note that when you put your chimney cap on there you don't put it on very tight at all just tight enough so that the gap closes here you can see I'm just doing it with one finger just to close the gap when you put your top cap on it's gonna be a little difficult to keep the o-ring in place if you try to screw the cap onto the tank. So what I like to do is screw the tank onto the cap. Basically flip it upside down, screw it on that way. That way the o-ring stays in place. It's also important to hold on and grip the tank section itself when you're tightening everything up and that makes sure that everything gets squeezed properly and o-ring seal. Then we can just fill it up. I like to hold the AFC with my thumb and use that to keep the airflow setting from changing while I'm threading it onto my model. And that, my friends, is how I re-wick my tank.